we're gonna talk about the secret to success. Who wants to know the secret to success, right? And uh, success can mean a lot of things to different people. You know, for success for you, it could be financially, it could be at your work, it could be in your family, it could be in your health. But however you define success, really the answer to that is found in the Bible, in God's word. And first I wanna take you to a scripture that shows us someone who had a lot of success because when we look at someone who's successful and we emulate what they did to become successful, we become more successful, makes sense? So we wanna look at David and there's a verse uh, about David in 1 Samuel 18, 30 and it says this, the Philistine commanders continued to go out to battle and as often as they did, David was met with more success than the rest of Saul's officers and his name became well known. So all of Saul's officers are going out. They're all fighting the same army with the same men. And yet somehow David is more successful than all of them. And that really brings you to the question of like, well, what did David do, right? Like if we could be like, hey, if I could get a glimpse in to what David did, then I would know how to be successful. And thankfully, the Bible tells us exactly what he did. And so I'm going to read to you just several verses, because I want to show us the impact of what happens when David does this. And so we read in 1 Samuel 23, 1 through 2, when David was told, look, the Philistines are fighting against Keilah and are looting the threshing floors, he inquired of the Lord. Everyone say, he inquired of the Lord. Saying, shall I go and attack these Philistines? And the Lord answered him, go, attack the Philistines, and save Keilah. The next one says this, once again, David inquired of the Lord. Say it with me, he inquired of the Lord. And the Lord answered him, go down to Keilah, for I am going to give the Philistines into your hand. So David and his men went there and fought the Philistines and carried off their livestock. He inflicted heavy losses on the Philistines and saved the people of Keilah. Then in 1 Samuel 23, verse 10, it says, David said, Lord, God of Israel, your servant has heard definitely that Saul plans to come to Keilah and destroy the town on account of me. Will the citizens of Keilah surround or surrender me to him? And Saul came down as your servant has heard. And the Lord God of Israel, tell your servant. And the Lord said, he will. And David asked, will the citizens of Keilah surrender me and my men to Saul? And the Lord said, they will. So David and his men, and about 600 in number, left Keilah and kept moving from place to place. When Saul was told that David had escaped from Keilah, he didn't go down there. 1 Samuel 30 says, David inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue this raiding party? Will I overtake them? Pursue them, God answered. You will certainly overtake them and succeed in the rescue. The next one in 2 Samuel 2 says, David inquired of the Lord, shall I go up to the one of the towns of Judah, he asked. And the Lord said, go up. And David asked, where shall I go? To Hebron, the Lord answered, or to Hebron, the Lord answered. And so on and so forth. So there's many, many verses. I actually have way more that I could answer, but you get the picture, right? It's David inquired of the Lord and the Lord answered him. And that is the secret to success, everybody. We could end the message right now. You're done. That's the answer, okay? So, David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered him. And so, one of the things we have to do if we say, listen, I want to see God do certain things in my life. We have to ask the Lord, God, what should I do in this moment? And the big things and the small things, and then we have to allow God to answer. See, David prayed, he obeyed God, and God gave him success. That's the formula right there. He prayed, he obeyed God, and God gave him success. Have you ever got yourself into a situation where you made a decision and you should have prayed, but you didn't pray? You know? I've been there many times. In fact, we have a cat that my daughter has that now lives in our house because I did that, okay? I listened to my daughter, <laughs> didn't pray. And now I have this cat, and I can't stand him, honestly, because he gets hair everywhere. And he loves me for some reason. Like, and I think it's because he knows. Like, that's the thing about cats, right? Like, they know that you don't like them. And so out of spite, he comes into our room, and I'll be, like, laying on the bed trying to relax. And he'll lay on me and start purring. And I feel horrible. 
but yet I still pick him up and throw him off the bed. You know, that's what I do every single time. I should have prayed about it a little bit because the cat has not become my daughter's cat so much. It's now my problem. You know what I mean? Or maybe it's something else, right? Like it's like something you look into, but then it, it can happen the opposite way. Have you ever had the moment where like you didn't pray and you went ahead and tried to do something and it didn't work out and afterwards you realize it was a really bad idea and you're like, thank God that didn't happen. And often we can save ourselves a lot of time and a lot of trouble and a lot of energy if we just pray and ask the Lord to reveal it for us. I've got a statement for you they're going to put on the screen. It says this, the secret to the blessings of God is to invite God into every situation of our life. Once again, the secret to the blessings of God is to invite God into every situation of our life. Often what hinders the blessing of God is we allow God into certain parts, but we exclude him from other parts. So it's like, God, you can come into my life on the weekend, but on Monday, Monday Micah doesn't like to listen to the Lord. You know what I mean? It's like, and we can do that. We can say, God, you can come here, but you can't come there. And when we segment where God can bless, we end up cutting off the blessing of God in all of those areas of our life. And we look back on it and we go, God, why, ain't I, why am I not blessed? And he's like, well, listen, you never asked me. You never asked me to come into that spot. If we look to God and we say, God, I'm doing really great at work, but my home life is horrible. Have you asked God to move in your home life? God... Listen, I'm getting along great with my wife, but my finances are horrible. Have you asked God into your finances? Are you doing the things that God has told us to do in our finances, to see the blessing of God in our finances? But what can happen is we can exclude certain parts. And what we end up doing is we only go in our own strength at that point. And I got to be just straight up with you. Our own strength is not enough. If we try to do everything in our own strength, you're going to end up tired. You're going to end up frustrated. You're going to end up looking at everything in life and going, why isn't this working out? Listen, we live in a world where things are difficult. I don't know if anyone said that to you before, but I'm gonna, I'll just be the first one if they haven't. Okay? Things are difficult. And we deal with difficult people and things are hard. But we serve a God that's bigger than anything that we would have to go up against. We serve a God that's bigger than anything in this world. And therefore, because we serve that big, big God, it doesn't matter how big the difficulty is, we serve a God that can move despite those circumstances or situations. And so we can't just go through the motions with God because a relationship with God is like any other relationship. So if I go through just the motions with my family, then the relationship is not very good. I'm going to tell on myself. So I had a particularly like bad couple of days where it was just like thing after thing after thing. You know, it's just like you go through seasons where it's just like things are hard, you know. And I got home and Emily comes to me and she's like, hey, I feel like we're a little off or a little distant. And what I should have said is I should have said, hey, tell me how you feel so I can make it not that way. But instead, I said, you know how hard these last couple days have been. Why are you making it worse by now bringing me another problem, you know? And immediately, I knew, you are a stupid, stupid man. What are you doing? <laughs> but instead, I doubled down on it. And I regretted it for the entire next day until I went and ate the crow that I should have ate in the first place, you know? Because relationship requires communication. It requires time. And what happens is if we treat God like he's there when I'm ready for him, then what will happen is you won't have the relationship that you could have with God. And you're going to wonder, why does God feel distant? Well, you're not spending any time with him. It's the same thing with Emily or my kids. If I'm always doing something else, thinking of something else, have my mind on something else, and I never get over that and come and say, hey, I'm going to make it about you right now, how are they ever supposed to feel close to me? They're not. 
the same thing with our relationship with God. And we wonder, God, why don't I feel your presence right now? Here's the thing. God is always there. But if you're not communing with God, if you're not talking with God, you won't recognize he's there or it won't feel the same. Have you ever had someone tell you, yeah, you're here, but you're not here? You know? God says that to you all the time, okay? It's like, hey, you're here, but you're not here. And so we've got to find a way to unlock that relationship with God. And so I've got a couple of things for you that will help us seek the Lord. Number one, we seek God through our worship. Psalm 25, 14 says, God friendship is for God worshipers. They are the ones he confides in. Wouldn't you like to know, like, the things that are on God's mind? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I want God to confide in me. I want that secret, top secret information, that friendship information. You know that thing where you're like, man, they're friends. Like, that person's in the know. They know what's going on. Like, that's what it could be with us and God. And we're in the service and we're worshiping and we're praising God and we're lifting up praising to God. God will speak things to your heart. He will reveal things to you in the moment. That is God worship. God friendship is for God worshipers. Number two, we seek God through his word. Psalm 119, 105 says, your word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. Another version says, it keeps me from tripping over my own feet. You know, we do that a lot. Like we can put our foot in our mouth or we can trip over our own feet. God's word helps to keep us on track. It helps to keep us on course. You know, there's lots of things that are coming into our minds all the time, okay? We're on Instagram, we're on TikTok, we're on Netflix, we're talking to other people. And what we have to understand is all of that information is coming in. And the more information that we bring in, the more things get down into our heart, the more things come out of our mouth. And what ends up happening is we get ourselves in a bad spot. But when we take God's word and we put it into our mind, the Bible says it's renewing our mind. It's like cleansing our thoughts. When we renew our mind, it gives us clarity on where we should go and what we should do. And so we seek God through worship. We seek God through his word. And then the last one, and this is the one we're going to spend the majority of the time is, we seek God through prayer. Jeremiah 33, 3, and this is like my favorite verse in the Bible, says, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great unsearchable things you do not know. Call to me and I'll answer you and tell you great unsearchable things you do not know. Listen, you have a hotline to information that nobody else knows. Like no one else can see. When we pray and ask God through the Holy Spirit, God can give us insight and information to things that we would not know otherwise. Have you ever walked into a room and you just know something's about to go down? You know what I mean? It's like, I just know it's going to happen. Listen, the Lord can do that for you. He can give you insight. He can give you favor in areas. He can help you in areas. And the more that we call on God, the more that God speaks to us, the more we're in tune to his voice. I think of the story of, of Samuel and Samuel is a, he's a prophet and he really was kind of the first king of Israel. Um, but, and you know, he wrote the books actually that we we're reading about David in. But he, when he was a boy, his parents said, if you give us a son, we're going to dedicate him to the Lord. And so Samuel when he becomes a certain age, they take him to the temple and he lives in the temple with the priest. And as he's living in the temple, he's around the things of God. And what he's doing is he's slowly tuning his ear to the things of God. And there's one night he's in bed and he's sleeping and he hears a voice and he calls out. It says, Samuel. And he says, here I am. And he doesn't really hear a response. And then he's sleeping again and he hears Samuel. And he runs into the priest's room. And he's like, you called me. And he's like, bro, I didn't call you. I'm trying to sleep, you know. And he's like, oh. So he goes back to bed. And finally, he hears Samuel. And Samuel knows, okay. He's tuning his ear to the voice of God. And he says, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And the more that we learn to listen to the things of God, the more God will reveal us, the greater God can use us, and the more God can show up in our lives. I've got another statement for you, and it says this. 
When prayer becomes our lifestyle, miracles become our reality. Prayer becomes our lifestyle, miracles become our reality. And that can be in really big, grandiose ways, or that can be in the simple things. And I'm reminded of right before we came to Faith Church, I owned a home inspection company. And I had done it in between. I worked at a church before for 10 years. And then in COVID, I had started my own business and it really blew up. And then what happened is I met Pastor David and he was so convincing that he got me to quit my job and come work for him, okay? I was a business owner. He's like, no, 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 no. You don't need to be doing that. You need to come work for me. And when I was planning on coming up here, I was like, oh, I need a, a vehicle that, that I don't need, you know, I had a truck and I was like, I don't need that because I'm coming to the city and I want something we can have people in and everything. So I called my dad who is a GM of a Ford dealership and I said, hey, I would like a vehicle and here's what I'm looking for. I said, I want a Ford Explorer and I want it to have third row and I want it to be black and I want black leather interior and I want heated seats and I want a system where I plug my phone in and it shows the navigation system because I don't really know St. Louis that well and I need to know how to get around town. I want it to be all wheel drive. I also want it to only have 60,000 miles on it. I want it to be a 2018 or newer and I only want to pay this amount of money. And he said, would you like a million dollars in a tow hitch as well? You know, that's what he said to me. And I thought, okay, maybe I'm being unrealistic. And then I thought, you know what? No, I'm not being unrealistic. I'm going to call on God. And so I got off the phone and I grabbed Emily by the hand and I said, listen, I know we really, really want this. And my dad says he can't do it. And if he can't do it, I know someone who's bigger than him, more powerful than him, greater than him. And so I'm like, let's ask the Lord to do it. Three days later, okay, my dad calls me. And he says, dude, you're not going to believe this, okay? I had a guy come in that wants to buy a vehicle and he wants to trade in his vehicle. The vehicle has 59,000 miles on it. It's in your price range. It's black with black leather interior. It has heated seats. It has a navigation system. It has all-wheel drive. It's got third row. And, and it's got a tow hitch on it, okay? And I thought, if there's a million dollars in the glove box, I'm going to lose my mind. There wasn't. But that's the God that we serve. When we devote ourselves to prayer, we'll see miracles happen. And often what happens is we lose out on the miracle because we don't pray the prayer. Jesus said, you have not because you ask not. How often do we go, Listen, I'm just going to figure it out. And prayer becomes our last resort, right? It's like everything is on fire. The whole building's burning down. It's like, Lord, will you just put out the fire? And it's like, well, if you would have prayed when the spark started, you wouldn't be in the situation that you're in, man. And so prayer can't be our last resort. It's got to be our first response. Our first response has to be prayer. And so tonight... We're going to do something a little different. We're going to open up the altar and we're going to pray. And I want to walk you through something because I understand for many of us, prayer has different degrees of anxiety for you, okay? Because it's like, man, I'm a five-second prayer. You know, like some people are like, Lord, you know my heart. Okay, we're done, you know? <laughs> some people, like Pastor Ree spends, you know, an hour and a half in her prayer closet every day. I don't know. You know, maybe. Maybe that's true. And so I want to walk us through just an easy guide for prayer because what we're going to do is we're going to open up the altar and I want to encourage you, if you want to see something different in your life, then you've got to do something different in your life. And so we're going to open up the altar, but before we do that, I want to walk you through this. And this is the most simple way that we can call on the Lord. And Jesus actually teaches it in Matthew 6, 9 through 13. So I'm going to read this and now I'm going to give you the 21st century version of this, okay? He says, this is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts 
as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. This is what he's saying. Our Father, so God is personal. In heaven, he's powerful. Hallowed be your name, he's perfect. So we're calling on a perfect, powerful, personal God. One that can meet our need. And yet one is personal enough, he sees you right where you're at and he wants to meet your need. So he's a perfect, powerful, personal God. Then it says, your kingdom come, your will be done. And what that's saying is, Lord, make it on earth as it is in heaven. You know, in heaven, there's no sickness. In heaven, there's no disease. In heaven, there's no pain. In heaven, there's no lack. In heaven, there's no anger. In heaven, there's no frustration. In heaven, there's no issues of political parties or there's no divide of the world. There's no war. There's no torture. There's no torment. There's none of that in heaven. And so what we're saying is, Lord, make it an open heaven over this place. Give us what you would do in heaven. Do it here in this moment. And so we're setting the stage for God to do a miracle. Then it says, give us this day our daily bread and goes on. And essentially what it's, asking, what it's saying there is, ask for what you need. So once you recognize that God is perfect and powerful and personal, and once you ask him to invade this place like it's heaven, then you ask for what you need. And then you believe that God is going to give you what you need. It's that simple. That's what Jesus is saying. You're praying to a God that can do anything and wants to do it for you. You're asking that heaven invade this place. You're setting the tone for a miracle. And then you're asking for what you need. And so the band's gonna begin to play. I wanna invite you at this time, anyone who wants to come, I want you to stand. I want you to come into the altar. And we're not gonna sing right away because I know once the worship team starts singing, you're gonna start singing and it will take your mind off of praying. It'll take your mind on the singing. But I wanna invite you to come in, step in the altar. You can kneel, you can stand, you can sit, whatever it is. But we're gonna call on God here at Sunset Hills. We're gonna call it God at RPC. We're gonna call on God at Ferguson. If you're online, you can sit, you can kneel, you can stand right where you're at, believing that God's gonna move in power. And we're gonna put up on the screen what I just talked about, these four points of things that you can do. Put up, we build our faith. Okay, so you're praying. Setting the stage for God to do a miracle on earth as in heaven, asking for the miracle. Or some of you just need to listen to his voice. Sometimes we talk so much that it's hard to listen to the sound of God. And so we're gonna pray, we're gonna seek the Lord. The band's gonna play for a minute. And in a moment, we're gonna sing. But I invite you just to come in and seek the Lord right now at this time. Hey, thank you for watching Faith Church on YouTube. And I want you to subscribe so you can know whenever we go live and post new content. You can also comment below and let us know if the message spoke to you. When you're watching also know that we wanna pray for you. We wanna know what's going on in your world. So you can comment below and we'll pray for you. Thanks again for watching on YouTube and we'll see you next time.